man, it's just been a good, been a good um, week and a half. A lot of stuff getting done. A lot of stuff that wasn't being planned on getting done, getting done. And so <laughs> that's that's even more awesome. Uh, need to um, remember. I was told that um, by faith we'll we'll get the funds that we need to pay for the things that are surprise. Um, and so um, you may be sitting on your faith. So pull it out and open it up and, and just see what. Faith is in there. Um, and be generous. Um, before I forget, Saturday, we, man, we're going to need a top to bottom, let's clean the house day. Um, bring your dusting utensils, bring a bucket with uh, some Scotch Bright pads. Looking for faithful volunteers to clean all of the wrought iron. And so, if we can get that clean, then we can, uh, it's going to need to be painted. And so, so if the volunteers are clean and want to be the volunteers that paint it, that'd be awesome. But um, if we need to find other volunteers, I'm sure we'll have people just lined up to, to attack that project. So, um, and then, how many of you would come tomorrow night? Um, Kathy needs a head count. Um, she's wanting to have pizza tomorrow night. And so we need a head count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let's start on this side. Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This side, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, Okay, so about the same as usual, a little over 20. So. You need money? Sure. No, I mean. I do. Okay. Well. Yeah, we need money, John. <laughs> I, I have no idea what, um, yeah, talk to Kathy. So, um, let's see. What other announcements were we supposed to be making tonight? Go ahead. Set your clocks back one hour. Why did you warn us? <laughs> so Sunday school class hour. and Sunday school class would have been packed. So these people show up. Yeah. <laughs> it's been doing nothing. Yeah. So um, remember to move your clocks. You fall back. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fall out. Uh, <laughs> so, um, it goes back. It looks like uh, you guys are going to be heading out Friday. Lord willing. <laughs> so who is in charge of the um, air removal from the tires? <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> who would like to go to Hayworks in the next two weeks? Who would like to what? Go up to Hayworks and help work up there. <laughs> Anybody longing for a trip over? Isn't that over by the Bay Area? Uh -huh. Anybody longing for a trip over there? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll keep working on that, Rob. Uh, but so thankful that the Phillips came to join us and, and Jared. Thank you so much for the screens. And turned out awesome. And yeah. I'll hold my thanks for the soundboard until it's done. <laughs> so, but for the effort that's been put forth so far, thank you, Jay and Devin. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Devin. A little bit of was taking Daddy's job. She was out there running that chop saw like a pro. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. You're going to take credit for that? <laughs> and so. And I think Richard is not going to take another church painting project for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, you've got an outstanding job. Oh, we, uh, uh, story, huh? I think we ended up using <laughs> twice as many buckets of paint as yes. we started out with. And we started out with 17 five gallon buckets. So. And all Richard can say is I need more paint. <laughs> Don't get more paint. 
We ended up, the light bulb was the last place we had to go to <laughs> get paid. <laughs> so, like, so we cleaned out all the home new We cleaned out, out, we cleaned <laughs> out, <laughs> out <laughs> yeah, so. Um, and John, John conspired with the deacons that were here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it is like, oh my God, it is like, uh, and so if you haven't been down to the fellowship hall, just make sure you take your sunglasses with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. And so it, it starts right at the bottom of that last stairwell because he put one there too, and it's yeah. like, it's oh great. wow. Yeah. So, um, I'm afraid most of us are going to put on more weight because we can see all the good food that's sitting there waiting to be ate. You know, <laughs> so, you know kind of could look past it, so let's uh, be cautious. Uh, let's see, what, well, Becky? Did you want to share with the class? <laughs> so we have to make our food look good now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. Uh, did everybody everybody watch Allison's tap on online? You did something. I'm sorry. She did a. Awesome I didn't know it was online. Okay. Well, let's see. I can pull it up, Allison. You want to pull it up? No. She Allison. wants to do a live demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Who put Evan by me tonight? Know. <laughs> Here tonight. Um, anybody seen Charles this week? I mean, he stopped by once, but he doesn't. Yeah, he's you saw him? Yeah, I saw him. Did you go back and see him and see him? Yeah, I saw him. He's still open. Yeah. You want to wish everybody well. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ron Crocker going in for a biopsy tomorrow. So mm -hmm. remember remember him on his lip notes. Um, Janet doing okay or uh, she just had a treatment yesterday and she'll be down for a few days after yeah. that chemo. Okay. Um, a lot of people with tests, a lot of people with procedures um, coming up, so let's remember that. A lot of people waiting for um, next steps going forward, so let's remember them as well. Um, and so. Why don't we go ahead and look to the Lord in a word of prayer before we do that. Um, any prayer requests that you guys want to share with us tonight? Rob. Our daughter is flying to Frog uh, this evening. Just pray for her for a safe trip. She's going with a girlfriend, especially in this crazy time. And they're having bad storms over there. The Langleys are on a cruise and are getting diverted from going to Paris because of 30-foot waves. So, wow. pray for their safety. It's a new boat. She says she hopes it's not going to end up like the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Remember that others, Phil? Um, remember last week I mentioned our school secretary. Um, just remember her. Her name is Urbana Sandoval. And one of our teachers at my school, Jennifer Atkins, is, has begun radiation therapy for her cancer. and. Uh, just like the church to be in prayer for her too. She's she's a believer. Um, so she started that journey. Anything else? Uh, the gal that I've been to Bible studies with, she um, is going in to have some more testing in Texas to look and see it about the cancer possibilities. So they had removed lumps and said it was fine, but then someone else looked at it. So. Just praying that she is completely, I, I, I love seeing the transformation, she's completely at peace that God has got this, but she would love our prayers about this. So. I beat you. The uh, family in Strathmore that they burned their home down and two of the children died. Mm -hmm. uh, there was seven all total, the man that kept, the father that kept going in, trying to save everybody is in critical condition. Can't breathe, can't chew, can't, I mean, he can't swallow in Fresno. And uh, our car club helped him out at the time, but they don't have, nobody has the money to bury anybody. Uh, it's a mess. And uh, I just pray for that family. 
Yeah, I just got a, another new student at Butterfield, and I know I've shared so many stories about the Butterfield students, but she's a young lady, very bright, got a straight A's, and uh, she has three terminal diseases. I didn't even recognize any of them, and I read up, <coughs> I had to Google all of them. Uh, she has a life expectancy of three to 10 years, mm -hmm. all of them. And I met her mother today. She has the same genes. Uh, and it really made me feel old because I looked at her and she didn't look like she was over 35. Maybe she wasn't, I don't know. But, uh, the whole family, it runs through the family. I just prayed for her and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I didn't tell you this, but I said, God can do things to get you through this. <coughs> and when I met the mother, and she said she, they prayed that God would give her a teacher that would help her get her through this. And uh, I told her, I said, well, I felt the same way about several of my students that God put them there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just keep her in your prayers. She, she really needs it. So. <clears throat> Anything else? Jake. Please remember uh, my wife and I, um, we're going to be well, let's put it this way. I'm going to receive some news this week, and I'm hoping for a soft response. Um, small groups. Uh, I know Jeff's is at meeting this week. Um, how are you doing, Caleb? We're off this week. Yeah, we, we finished our lesson. We're going to take a week off, and then our regroup. Yeah. Jace? We'll meet this week. Um, We'll have to see about next week. I'll ask everyone. Great. We're going to take it day by day. One, one week at a time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Jeff, you guys meet? Did you guys meet Monday? Yeah. No, we oh. had to cancel. We had some complications. So, we'll be at it again nice. next week. While we're talking about small groups, we have a very short time before we'll be starting taking holidays. Um, be thinking about what you want to do after the holidays. If you need materials, please let me know. Appreciate it. Okay, I think we've covered everything tonight before we even get started, so that's awesome. So I would look to the Lord and seek His blessing upon all of the prayer requests and, and the spoken and the unspoken, all of the activity and burdens and um, the ministry. Let us especially have on our hearts that all that we've done is for the glory of the Lord and that the seeds that are sown through our willingness to serve bear precious fruit in seeing lost souls saved and saved souls committed. As we look to the Lord to seek His blessing upon our service tonight. Um, Brother Phil, can you open us in prayer, please? Father, thank you for this time that we have. And especially want to thank you for all the people that have been helping with the building, making it beautiful. And um, thank you that everything's been safe so far. And, um, pray that everything that we do, would, we would seek to bring honor and glory to you. And always keep our focus on Jesus Christ. Thank you for the lesson we're about to receive from Brother Tom. And, the privilege of praying for one another. It's a lot of prayer requests, Lord, and you know the, the each and every one of them. And I know that you'll answer them according to your will. Thank you, Father, for <coughs> saving us. Thank you for making us your children who call on you. And thank you for the joy of serving you as your children. I ask you would just go with us throughout the rest of this time. Forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's 17th Psalm. Some of it tonight. Uh, you know, some of the times when you when you see um, statements and phrases made by the psalmist and by others, it kind of is important that you stop and consider. You know, how how would I apply that to me? What what could I say if I were in a similar circumstance or situation? What would I be asking the Lord to do in my life? And as we looked at this, um, it's kind of like 
when, when you need the Lord's perspective and, and power in your life in the midst of a conflict, uh, there are scriptures that are designed specifically to help us in those moments, to help us focus our thoughts and give us, give us direction on at least the possibility of a way to approach it. But if we don't, if we don't take the Word of God and the Scriptures hide it in our hearts, that we might not sin against Him, then there are so many, so many things that are available to us that we just miss out on. There, there's so much truth, there's so much power in, in the Word of God that a lot of times we miss out on how it could assist us or help us, give us food for thought to deal with whatever the situation might be. And, and so you look at the Psalms and, and they help us kind of, the psalmist in this one is kind of regaining an assurance of the fact that the Lord loves him and that he desires to help us open up to the possibility that there is healing from our hurts. That there, there is a God who, who loves his children and, and desires to help us um, in this journey of life that, that we are on. And so when we look at this psalm, Hey, let's just let's just get going here. Um, so it's referred to as a prayer of David, and he says, "Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry, give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night." You have tried me and, found, and have found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. Consider the works of men. By the words of their lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. <clears throat> Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O oh God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O oh, you who save those who trust in you from those who rise up against them, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts with their mouths, they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey. And like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked with your sword. With your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possessions for their babies. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. <coughs> I like how one author put it, you know, when you look at certain <laughs> words and, and the accumulation of those words and the synonyms that are used, it gives us a picture of God and, and helps us to understand that the, the humanizing, um, the big old word that the, this writer used, anthro morphism and so human characteristics associated to God and so he talks about in this he, he just talks about the cry the prayer the lips the mouth and the speech and, and you look at that as a group the ways the steps the paths and the feet and, and the parallel that you find in in, in those words and, and so when God is being characterized in, in this psalm he has ears, he has a face, he has eyes, he has wings, he has hands, a sword, and, and, uh, and this general bodily form 
that the psalmist uses to describe God to give us a, a visual imagery that we can um, have of Him. And so it's, it's important for us to realize these characteristics. Um, and I, as I read this psalm, one of the things that I wondered is, how's the Lord tested me? How's the Lord tested you? What, what are some of the tests that you have in, been engaged in from time to time? And how did God find you in the midst of that? How did, how did God find you as His dear child in the midst of a trial or a tribulation? Did He find you faithful? Did He, did he find you panic? Did He find you afraid? Did He find you courageous? How, how did He find you? Did he find you with assurance of his presence and his mercy and his grace? Or did he find you curled up in the fetal position in the corner just hoping the world would pass you by and that God would just take you home? It, it, it's like the, the psalmist, if you look at as we said, been saying the psalms and, and man, they, David goes back and forth in, in his emotional roller coaster ride sometimes. Um, from the top of the mountain to the depths of the valley and, and, and but he always ended up back at a place where he trusted God where he was depending upon him and, and, and so I mean just meditate on the images of God and the protection that he provides you as his child it, it, it's like I we look at that one phrase in the in, the, in this psalm and this that, that refuge that God provides for us underneath the wings of the Almighty. Sheltered by the wings of God. And, and um, how many of you saw the picture of the two bald eagles that got their talons um, stuck together while they were fighting over food? And it was like, oh my goodness, you know. But I tell you, if there's just one eagle that you can you know, have on your side and... and shelter underneath his wings, that would be our God. He'd, he'd be the one that we'd want to rest in. And so, in this song, I want you to stop and think about something that he'll address in here, and that is, what are you pursuing in life? What are your, what are your pursuits, and where are they leading you? And remember, I always tell you that every, every choice has a destination. Every choice will lead you somewhere. There is a result that's going to come from that choice. And, and, and so if you're heading to a place that you realize you don't want to be, then guess what? You need to make another choice to stop and turn around or go in a different direction or make a different decision. And, and so, but some people are so engaged in pursuing the things of the world, um, they lose sight of the fact that, that those things are temporal. They have, they have a beginning and an end, right? It, it's only the, the spiritual things that are eternal, that, that are everlasting. And so the, that contrast is brought out in this psalm, and we'll see that as we look through it. But remember, that the scriptures encourage us to be and tell us that we'll be conformed to the image of the likeness of Christ. We're told in, the, in Philippians to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that, that mindset of humility, of a servant. And, and so, I mean, stop to think about it. So what's it going to be like when we behold the righteous face of Christ Almighty? When we're standing in the presence of God and viewing Him face to face. I wonder what that's going to be like. That satisfaction of standing in His presence. Having our eyes open finally to the reality of our existence in Christ for all eternity. And so those are just some things to think about as we go through this psalm. Um, and, and what I'm going to do is, I, Sister Robin asked me to keep it short tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> I drink two cups of coffee, so you're good. Oh, you drink some coffee? Oh, well. <laughs> fuel. Anyhow, were you already raising your hand on me? No, I was not ready. You were about ready. Just put them on notice, anyway. Go for it. Some of the things I think about, what you said, you know, so a lot of times we don't 
has to be test, te tested. Mm -hmm. We don't want God to put us in a bind or make us uncomfortable, you know. But He does that for our well-being and good. And draw us closer to Him. And he talks about in the New Testament that God prunes those that are producing fruit that they might produce more. And you know, we think, well, I don't want that. You know, it's just, He's good no matter what He does. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if we're going to be increased in our service, if we're going to become a vessel of honor in the hands of the Master, um, sometimes we got to be still and let Him work. And I think sometimes the reason that we individually and sometimes collectively as a church family don't experience um, the best that God has for us is, is because when we don't expect it, Two, we don't ask for it, and, and three, we couldn't handle it if we got it. You know, and, and so um, that cry for justice that comes out uh, by the psalmist, which is a regular theme for David, right? And we all agree that David's pretty good at crying out to the Lord, and you know, and and and, and so he starts out, my cause is just. Have you ever been have you ever been right in an argument? <laughs> How many of you are admitted willing to admit you were wrong in an argument? <laughs> My cause is just, right? I, I'm gonna be proven right. It's like the young man at seminary, right? Who the professor watched running back and forth to the library, and he finally stopped him on about the fourth trip back to the classroom. And he said, So what are you doing? Well, I, we're studying something in class, and, and I know I'm right, and I'm just trying to find a book that agrees with me. <laughs> and it's what so many, so many of us as God's children do. We want to justify our actions with the Word of God, so we're just trying to find a scripture that will say something, but he says, my cause is a just cause. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to me. Listen to me. This is... I, I, this is worth your time, right? And, and, and he talks about the compassion and, and it just give heed to my cry. No, how many of you have ever experienced a conversation where somebody started crying? And, it, and it's like, how many of you wish you could find a graceful way to get away from that? You know, it's like, but how many of you reached out um, in compassion and, and provided a hug, provided a shoulder to cry on, let them know that they didn't have to journey through this alone. And, and so the compassion, I think, um, I think sometimes our cynicism has um, overwhelmed our compassion. I, I just, um, I, I don't like to see people cry. I don't like to see people hurting. Um, except when there are tears of joy, <laughs> you know, I, I, I revel in that like most people do, but, but oh, let, let one of our kids cry in pain, oh my goodness, you know, oh that is, right? So how do you think God feels when His children are crying in pain, crying in confusion, crying because they just don't know what to do? You know, he loves us. And so we know that there is compassion um, to be found at, at the throne of God. So he just said, you know, give ear to my prayer. So that's that first characteristic. So God, you got an ear. I want you to lend it to me for a moment so I can, you know, make sure you're listening to the prayer that I'm offering up to you. So, so he's covering these um, characteristics and he's saying, you know, getting to the point where this is why you should pay attention to me. And, and I love children. You all know I do. I love grand, my grandchildren. You all know I do. And, 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 and it's just so much fun to sit and watch them try to get somebody's attention. Sometimes it's just anybody's attention, you know. It, but it, it, it's, it's just amazing. I will sit here in church. And, and there have been a few times where I've had to tell a parent in church, would you just pay attention to them? <laughs> they, they just want they just want you to acknowledge their presence you know I'll usually tell the kids wait a minute say excuse me please right 
Now, if I've instructed your child to tell you, excuse me, please, and you continue to ignore them, then I will probably step up and excuse you what you're talking about. <laughs> Definitely can't be as important as what your child has to say right now. It's too easy. What did Jesus say about the little children? Come to me. Let the children come. <laughs> And, and we just really, you know, I, I'm not saying let them be rude and disrespectful and, and just whatever, but uh, I know some of you parents, your greatest fear for your child or your grandchild was that they might rush the stage some Sunday, <laughs> right? You just think that would be the end of the world. And there's probably some older adults that think that would be the end of the world. And me, I'd probably just pick them up and ask them if they were having a good time, you know? And then when they said no, I said, well, I'm sorry, I'll try harder, right? It, it's, there's just some stuff that's not the end of the world. And, and especially if it causes us to shelve our compassion, you know, help our concern and our love for, for them. Because, beloved, God never shelves his compassion for us. Amen. He, he doesn't. He, he loves us. And, and, yeah, he'll whoop us every once in a while, but he does that in love too. And so, my, my, that, that personal, let my judgment come forth from thy presence. I, I'm ready. Let it, let it go. And Because and, see what? Now he says, let thine eyes. Right? So he's got ears. He's got eyes. Um, look with equity. Look upon this in a fair manner. You are a fair and righteous judge. Nothing better than going to somebody that you know um, will be fair and objective. Going into, going into a situation where you know that the deck stacked against you is kind of pissed. But knowing that you have a God who... He's righteous and just in all that he does. So, the psalmist, um, well, how about verses 1 and 2? That you Comments, corrections, additions, subtractions. Y'all are going to make mine that easy, huh? <laughs> I see Robin was not the only one that wanted it short today. <laughs> Robin, you should have brought that pot of coffee up here. <laughs> Jay, did you raise your hand? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I bowed my head, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, let's go. We'll do one more section. Uh, verses 3 through 5. So... What does he say or what does he mean in that phrase, that idea of not speaking from deceitful lips? What's the characteristic that he's getting at? He's honest. He's honest. How many, how many times you honest, I'm not lying. Have you ever been around, have you been around children much? You know, they, they never lie. Honest. I'm telling you, do we not act the same way to God? No, really, Lord, no. And so, he's honest. How about thou, that phrase thou hast tried or tested my heart? I like the part that says, I am purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. I need a purpose more. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, so what about the heart? We have to be careful. I um, and I'll talk to, to Julian Christian and others a lot. Um, sometimes we get so fixated on um, one phrase in one scripture that we we carry that over in its entirety to every aspect of. No, this is what the Bible says. Well, yeah, the Bible says that, but that doesn't mean that it negates other characteristics or attributes. In other words, the heart's deceitful. The heart is sinful, is it not? Okay, but the heart can be tried, and it can be found to be right in the sight of God. It can be found to have love. And so, you know, it's kind of like leaven, right? We, we want to talk about leaven and everybody, every time you see leaven, it's what? Sin. 
consent. Isn't that what you were taught, right? <laughs> but doesn't the Bible um, use leaven in more ways than just to refer to sin? That's your assignment for next week. I should find, there are scriptures. I'll tell you. Go look at Luke. You know, it uses leaven in reference to something other than sin. But you listen. Oh no, leaven's sin. Oh God. Avoid generalizations. All right. You know, context makes a good determining factor over what is meant by what's being said. So you've got a. He's pure in heart. Thou has tried my heart. You've looked at me. Didn't, he, didn't another place in the Psalms, he, he's um, in his Pendle Psalm, he says, search me and, and right, and wash me, cleanse me, and I'll be whiter than snow. And, and so, I got nothing to hide. You visited me. Right? You visited me in the night. And thou hast tested me and dost find nothing. I mean, that's pretty bold, isn't it? I, I, I'm a pure-hearted man with nothing to hide, and I'm blameless in your sight in, in this occurrence, in this instant. David's kind of stepping out there, isn't he? How many of you are willing to say, Lord, just come and examine me right now? You know my thoughts. You know my heart. You know my actions. Right? Oh, are you ready to just step right in the presence of God right now? Or do you want me to wait five minutes? He knows got, anyway. Got a few, things, got a few things to repent of. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be ready for the preeminent return of the Lord at any moment, it's like, are you? Are you? Are you, are you really ready? You want to... You have a, a, the plane of this is your life on the big screen of heaven? Bring it up. <laughs> you go, but you go. <laughs> My nephew owns one of those. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and that I think that's part of Jesus' point. Don't worry about tomorrow. He's got enough, you got enough trouble today. <laughs> So, uh, you can only deal with God in the present. But sometimes we try to fixate on the past. You know, Paul seems to always remind us that he was the chiefest of sinners. And at the same time saying, forget what lies behind and press on towards current. But that's, that's in David's life, if we take certain present times in his life he couldn't say this mm -hmm. but at whatever hour this is he's able to say that and we're the same way there are times in our lives when we're not ready to talk to God we don't want to open ourselves to him because yeah it's not going to look real pretty <clears throat> but we can only deal with the present we can't deal with the tomorrows or the yesterdays Other thoughts? Um, that I, I purposed that my mouth will not transgress. Or got that purpose there. What is that an indication of? A purpose in my mouth that I won't transgress. What's He's thinking self about control. it. Self-control. Self-control. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> constantly <laughs> thinking about it. We go. Watch your mouth. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have made a conscious decision that what comes out of my mouth is going to be appropriate. And, and I don't want what comes out of my mouth to transgress or to be unpleasing in the ears of God. Because He's already given them ears, right? He's got ears. He, he, he hears us when we pray. He sees us in the lives that we're living. And, and so, again, I like how Brother Rachel put it. It's just like, at this particular moment, under inspiration of the Spirit of God, he was able to write down what had happened in this instance that he offered up this prayer to God. Okay? 
And, and so you got to realize he wrote this after this happened. And, and so he's relating under inspiration what, how he was at that moment during that prayer. Now you're raising your hand. Yep. Okay. I see this as a success that David's had, and, mm -hmm. and he is elated by it. Not, not for the sense of pride or... Because I think this is inspired by God to write it. But we all go through these times where we have successes and failures. And I tell you what, I love the successes a whole lot more than I like my failures. And, I, and those, those successes make you want to try more. And they want, you want more, you want more, you want more of those successes. You want that oneness with the Lord. That's why He saved us. That's why He sent His Son. I can I can just feel that mm, earnest desire in David's words. This is uh, I like. Let me share this thought with you guys. Um, I I like how one author um, categorizes this psalm. He he does categorize it as an individual lament psalm. And, he, and it's framed in the form of a prayer. And, and so, and, and he just seems, the lament part comes from um, being unjustly accused of wrongdoing. And none of us respond well to somebody accusing us of doing something that we didn't do. Or being somebody that we're not. And, and so, so he's beginning this petition to the Lord for the Lord to hear him, for the Lord to vindicate him. He's asserting his innocence. He's offering up this petition to God for refuge and protection from his enemies, from his adversaries, from those who falsely accuse him. He describes these individuals as, as ravenous individuals. I mean, they're just like animals. And, and so he asks the Lord to confront these individuals. To, to deal with them and to deliver him from them. And his faithful declaration at the very end of this, where he declares the confidence that he'll experience God's presence. Reminds me of the, uh, the song, We Shall Behold Him. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's, hmm. Y'all know that song, right? We Shall Behold Him. That's an awesome song. But anyhow, um, other other thoughts or comments? I am one last thing, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. So he says, "I've kept I've kept from the path of violence. My steps have held fast to thy paths." and my feet have not slipped. What's that sound like? Self-control again. Yeah. It starts off as talking like there's a pathway to stay on, mm -hmm. but I think he also recognizes, yeah, you need to stay on that pathway, but there's times that it's not going to be your control to slip off that pathway. There's times that I need his hand, his protection, his his vision to be able to stay on this pathway. Uh, I, I I think he truly understands um, how much sometimes it's out of your control to stay on the pathway. There. There's forces that we come up against that it's only God's grace that keeps us where we where we are. And I'm not making light of of what our ability is or or isn't, but it just seems like there's times that <coughs> Satan when he draws a target on your back, there ain't no getting him off until you know you cry out to God. 
he's the one that has the ability to to put his hand around you to where you have protection that you don't have without it. You can also acknowledge as what uh, that we all know where we are weak and where we have the ability, where we have the tendency to slip. And we always and we know that those things occur and those are there and we you know we've gone through and trust the Lord and maybe in this I see David doing you know, he's he's not taking the way that others might take if you're in this way you're being falsely accused or you're being sought what what you might tend to do and he's holding to what the Lord would say to his path and what he wants to do. <coughs> <coughs> you ever, ever have someone tell you keep on the straight and narrow? Mm-hmm. You know, watch, watch where you're going. Um, avoid those temptations. Allow yourself to be guided by the Word of God. Richard. Well, I know I'm reading out of King James, but it says, by the word of thy lips. Mm-hmm. So everything that he's talked about so far he's been able to accomplish by <coughs> the word of thy who is God the word of God's lips have directed my paths and brought me to this place that I can proclaim that I am at that moment to approach God in the righteous way that he is but it's only because of the word being in his life being part of his life. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Right. Other other thoughts? God told that um, he can, David cannot build the temple because he's a man of much war. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, Harry says, David says, I'm not a wild man, but he, he went through a lot of violence, it seems like in the wars that he fought. It may not have been a bad one, it was a just one, I don't know. Well, I think there's a lot more to that than just the speculation of, mm-hmm. of the amount of violence that David did or didn't enter into, and, and so. <laughs> but uh, that verse that, that Richard was pointing out was back there in verse number four that phrase by thy words by the word of your lips right and so um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God proper for doctrine for proof for correction for instruction and righteousness that the man of God be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works it is the word of God and man when you I don't know how many are still you know, keeping up with their reading through the Bible, uh, but it, it's just like trying. I always try to encourage you to get in the Word and learn the Word and, and understand it. And, and the more you read it, the, just the you know, it you find that you find new stuff every time through it. Right? It's just awesome. So. Um, Anything else? I know you were hoping I'd get to the apple of his eye, but we'll do that next week. I think a lot of what David, his life and his recollections, is just a validation of what God is and who he is. Because David failed so many times. You know, he's not one who's perfect. And he's a great example of all of us because his, you know, the evidence of his going to war is dealing with Bashir, Uriah. Uriah and his wife, you know, those those same things. And man, I've never met him that bad. But here's a man still that's after God's heart. And I think that's the key because God is the only one that can look at our heart. And you can't look at my heart. I can't look at anybody else's heart. But he realized that God knows his heart. And I think that's so important for us because we're going to fail as sinners. And, but we have the forgiveness of God if we seek Him and ask for it. And David always did that. Well, 
And I just say it's two of the more respected or admired or, or looked at with um, a desire to know uh, um, individuals in the scripture that are David and, and Saul, who became Paul, and they were both accessories to murder. Right. <laughs> they were both murderers. And, and it's like, but God took them and used them. And they, you know what the point is I get from that? Don't tell me what you've done that, that why you can't serve God. <clears throat> you know, seriously. Um, unless you all have something that I don't know about, which, you know. But, again, like Stan said, he's looking at the heart. So if you have this intense dislike for somebody in your heart, that makes you what? Okay. And then so, anyhow, other other thoughts. I was just thinking, it's the confidence in God, mm. and really, it's the confidence, and that's with salvation too. It's our, it's not our confidence in how we've lived in the past or how we're living in the future, but it's our confidence that God is able to hold on to us and have faith that He will deliver us. And so. You can just see that David's part in relationship in that confidence in God. See, so you brought up another song. He is able. He is able. He is Continue to be in prayer. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Continue to be in prayer for all those that are going to be continuing to work tomorrow. Um, look around. You know, you have to come back in day. Look around and see what you think. Um, Richard made it really clear that if something needs to be painted that wasn't painted, that he's more than happy to give you a brush and let you have right at it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, he's getting tired, so I don't know why all these honorary things just, you know, that I'm trying to show him some mercy and grace, so we'll just let it go. But, uh, actually, I think Pastor was the one that said that. <laughs> It's like, we got brushes, we'll have paint. Um, Evan's gonna, you're gonna paint the doors, Evan? Is that what you decided? Absolutely. No murals. With a mural. No murals. <laughs> mural or I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's showing you a guy. <laughs> You guys made that sound a lot more sassy than it was. <laughs> <laughs> you got the ooh uh, I appreciate appreciate y'all being here tonight. Um, Saturday, 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 Saturday. We need a great turnout um, so we can get everything cleaned up. Okay, so everybody. Try to find some time. You don't have to all be here at once, but try to find some time to come down and do that. Um, be in prayer for um, the resources to comfortably pay for all of the wonderful things that have been done. I think I don't think we've blown our budget totally out of the water, but um, I am thankful for the things that have been accomplished. You did. Know. As we stand together to look to the Lord, be dismissed in a word of prayer.
is ask everybody to consider all the prayer requests. There seems to be a whole lot of prayer requests on the hearts of this people. Uh, just ask your blessings on each one according to your will. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the builders that come down and give them their time. Uh, thank you for the ladies that prepared the food. And they're, they're just a blessing. I just thank you so much for them. Uh, just go with us through the rest of this week. And bring us back Sunday for a great service. Forgive me my sins and my shortcomings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.